Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. So today we're going to pick up where we left off in trying to descale the tanks that we've just retrofitted for the brewery. We've got five tanks in all, five uh, new conicals, which you're all familiar with. And there they stand in a beautiful line. Um, the scale inside the tanks is particularly thick. I've never seen it that bad before. So I've been doing a little bit of research on the thinter webs uh, about a couple of product, products, products, products that I've got. So Foz gel being one of them, which we've already seen, we've trialed, and uh, well, it didn't quite work as intended. And the next one is this bad boy, nitrosid. So this is uh, a nitric and phosphoric acid, um, which is designed for recirculation in the tanks to try and get rid of any lime scale. Whereas the Fos gel, the phosphoric acid based gel, is designed to be painted on and left as long as possible then removed with a scouring pad. I don't really fancy scrubbing the tanks, if I'm honest. It means laying them all down again, getting inside with that horrible gel. No thank you, sir. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure out the required dose of nitrosid. We're going to stick it into a bucket. We're going to pour it into the top of the tanks and we're going to recirculate it through our CIP pump and through a spray ball and hopefully that will cure our problem. But as we're finding out with these things, because the amount of beer stone in there, amount of carbonate in there, look how bloody dark that is. Because of the amount of carbonate in there, there's no guarantee this is going to work. So I've got an acid dose guide here and nitrosid comes out at 0.5 to 2%. So we're looking for um, 15, 5 to 15 millilitres per litre. I think that's right. No, it's not. That would be five, 5 to 20 millilitres per litre. So I'm going to measure this bad boy out. The buckets that we use here hold approximately 17 litres. So I've got a handy dandy guide. I need 85 to 340 mil per bucket. So I think we'll go forwards with the uh, middle of that range, see how it works. Because I don't want to put the maximum amount in and then all the carbonate flakes off the walls and blocks the pump and I have to drain it out. So we'll go slowly and we'll try and dissolve it all into solution. So I think around 200 mil, 250 mil per bucket should do us. Right, let's go for it. This will be accurate enough for what we're doing. We don't need 100% accuracy for this uh, dosing. We are winging it a little bit, aren't we? So I'm looking for 250 mil. That's not a lot. That's right down there. Let's go for it. Oh, that'll do between 200 and 300, so uh, there with nothing though. Right, I'm just going to fill this bucket up with water and then we'll uh, bang the acid in and get it into a tank. Right, we're up here at the top of the tank and uh, well we can see the dip tube now, how it operates. Greg was asking me, uh, aren't the pipes high up? You know, the outlets aren't they high up? They are high up to avoid the sediment bed because in these tanks the bottom of that cone pretty much up to where the hole in the tank is will be full of yeast sediment and or hot particles and maybe trub as well transferred from the boil kettle so we want to be able to uh, miss that when we're taking the beer off so the idea with this dip tube is we can rotate it on the other side and by watching the flow of liquid coming out of the tap we can find where the level of the sediment bed is. So when it's clear, you're out the sediment. When it's murky, you're in the sediment. 
So you fine tune it and then just draw off from above the sediment. It's a very handy way of extracting beer from a tank. But having said that, that's not what we're here to do. I'm worried that this is going to fall over now. We're here to uh, get rid of this lime scale. So I've got the nitrosid here. Now you wouldn't normally do this because uh, you should be adding this to water. Uh, but I want to see what effect it has on the actual lime scale neat. So I'm going to put this in first and then I'm going to add the water. I know it's the wrong way around, but uh, I can't help myself. I'm hoping to see a little bit of fizzing. Oh, well, not a lot happened if I'm honest. Mm, not a lot at all. So anyway, that's the nitrosid in. And then I'm just going to scoop some water in. Oh no, it has, it's moved it. Even just rinsing that section off there, it's def it has moved it off the tank. So by doing this, I'm lightening the bucket and also getting rid of any extra nitrosid that happens to be in the jug. So I don't burn my skin when I take it back over there. Oh well. All the surfaces are now wetted. When it's wet, it doesn't look that bad. So let's hope that this does the job. Whew. Right, let's get the rest of this bucket of water in. There's not much left in there. Let's pop the lid on and let's go and turn on the pump. Oh, can you smell it. It smells like rotten eggs. That'll be hydrogen sulfide, I believe. Right, there we are, we're down. We've got all the correct safety measures down here on the pipe work. So, let's give the valve its first opening. There we are. That's charged the pump. Let's turn the pump on. And let's open the valve. So we'll leave that for a couple of hours and come back and have a look. I'm hoping we don't get any drips coming out the top. Because if we don't, that means I don't have to modify the lids. Right, we've got a cask of uh, the New England IPA or the Taking the Piff that didn't quite work out left over and uh, it's probably reaching its best before now or getting a bit long in the tooth. So we're just going to tip it and get rid of it. So for the purpose of HMRC we're going to record the event to prove that we've disposed of it. Here we go. You ready? I'm ready. Oh, it's not going to be as exciting as you think. Well, <laughs> oh, dear me. So when you went to the top. It's got pressure still. Trying to take the uh, thing out, but we weren't having it. Oh, that's a shame. I thought it was going to be a right gusher. Right, let's get that keystone out. I'll tell you what, it smells nice. There we go. Oh, shit. Keystone's gone down great. If only it tasted as good as it smells. 40 litres. That's a beautiful laminar flow though, isn't it, coming out that cask. So what did we have in the bottom in terms of sediment? They don't look too bad, does it, really?
there's your, there's your sediment coming out, look. It's got the colour of it. Yeah, a bit of yeast. Well, there we have it, folks. 40 litres of beer down the drain. The tanks have had a good couple of hours, well, this tank has anyway, the first one that we've done. And I'm pretty pleased with the results, so I've transferred um, the second dose of nitrosid across into the second tank. Because the first dose I think got rid of most of the carbonates, the second dose tidied it up. So, this is what we've got left. So look at that, I mean, I think it's pretty much gone. I can't really see any evidence of lime scale or carbonates on the surface now. So I'll try and put in another picture of what the tank looked like before we started this acid treatment. And you'll be able to see the difference between the two. I mean this one, it's reflective, you could eat your dinner off it. I mean it's really, I can see the reflections in here, you might not be able to pick up so well on the camera. But I'm pleased. The lid does leak a little bit though when you've got the full um, rotational spray ball really giving her the guns. But I don't think it's going to be an issue when you've got product in here because obviously you're not going to have anything firing at the lid to come across the surface. This one seems to be working a little bit better. You'll notice that this one doesn't have this pronounced lip on the edge. And so far I can't see any leaking. So it seems to be a tighter fit, but you can really hear the uh, rotating spray ball inside hitting all the surfaces. So we'll leave that for a little bit longer and then we'll check out tank two and see how that one has fared. So I've spent all afternoon, uh, a good five hours upstairs trying to put together a universal beer bottle label so we can bottle several different styles of beer but use one label just to save on print run so we can do lots of small batches I'll show you that in a moment first I want to show you the results of the second tank clean and again I am absolutely overjoyed it's totally stripped this one that section there was awfully thick in there in lime scale and it's all gone I think it looks brilliant. It's all now in solution in that green looking acid there. So I'm going to leave that overnight. I've disconnected the pump and rinsed it out with some water because there is a brass ferrule in there that holds the impeller on so I didn't want to make, I didn't want to dissolve it overnight sat in the acid so I always rinse it out if I've had acid in the CIP pump. So what I'm going to do now is show you the label that we've put together. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, hopefully I'll be able to put it onto put it onto a bottle straight and we can see it properly like properly. So this is the idea. That is basically the label with all the details on there. And this obviously is the logo and then this section here where this sticker is is just blank with some little black marks in the corners and then all we have to do we have a print run of like a thousand of these to go onto the bottles and then all we have to do on the computer to fill in the particulars like the name of the beer the beer style and the ABV we just print on these little Avery labels and stick them onto the sticker so a sticker on a sticker Slightly more expensive because we're buying the Avery labels, but you get like a hundred sheets for 20 quid. So it's not that bad, I don't think. And it means that we can keep the versatility in the beer styles and we're never going to be disposing of labels that we're not going to use. Let's say I make a beer and we only bottle a hundred and I've had 200 labels printed. I'm not going to just make that beer again for a hundred labels sake when uh, and we've got some left over. Right, so this is always the tricky part. Getting the label on the bottle in a straight line. Can never seem to be able to do it. I'm a bit out of practice, you see. Way up. I've already had a false start up. Oh. 
Well, I think I've got it. Hey, you know you're close when uh, the two bits on the back line up pretty good. So that's what it would look like basically on a shelf. Oh, there you go. That's what it should look like on a shelf. And uh, that's the details on the back. I think it looks a little bit too traditional for me on the back. Uh, but the front kind of looks okay. So I'm not 100% happy with it. So I've not sent any proofs off to the printers or anything yet. But uh, I think we're kind of getting there. Again, we're proving the concept. You know, it's an ideal name for a beer, isn't it? Because we constantly prove concepts here at Harrison's Brewery, as you know. And of course, also on the channel. And uh, talking of the channel, that's it for the day. I am signing out, I'm going home. It's approaching seven o'clock. I've worked late again, I didn't mean to. So I'm gonna take this with me to show Gem and the kids, and then I'm gonna get myself bathed and bed ready for tomorrow. We'll see you then.